everyone. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. You know, when I first started working here at Brome, we never heard of bluebirds visiting our bird feeders. Then about five years ago, we started receiving pictures and questions about whether bluebirds are all right eating dried mealworms out of our bird feeders. A number of you actually tried that and then confirmed that our squirrel buster feeders are just fine with dried mealworms and bluebirds are quite happy. And now every year we're getting more and more videos and pictures of bluebirds happily eating at our squirrel buster suet. Chloe, who has a live webcam, just sent me a clip of her bluebirds on our squirrel buster nut feeder. That's something really new to us. So now we know that bluebirds are quite happy visiting our feeders, whether it's hulled sunflowers, dried mealworms, suet nuggets, suet or shelled peanuts, they are quite happy. And the reason more and more people are seeing bluebirds in their backyards is because their population has grown. Remember, their population dropped drastically because of habitat loss and house sparrows taking over their nesting cavities. But thanks to all the efforts that have been put into restoring their population, they are doing better and better. So if you have bluebirds in your area, whether they're visiting your feeders or not, consider putting up a birdhouse or two to attract them. You know, years ago, I did that in my backyard. Unfortunately, we have too many trees. I kind of knew that they would not be attracted to this habitat. But then a few weeks ago, I was talking to a Wild Birds Unlimited store and they were telling that they are seeing bluebirds in wooded areas, wooded backyards right now. So I am actually feeling really hopeful. Now let's cover the basics of having a bluebird house on your property. There are a number of uh, bluebird houses on the market. Uh, you can actually build one yourself. You can check out Cornell's Nest Watch for a plan. You can also visit National Bluebird Society websites. Or if you're shopping for one, please check what they are recommending for a proper bluebird house. Make sure to pole mount it with a baffle. If you can get one with a predator guard around the entrance hole, even better. Remember, there are lots of predators that like going into those uh, bluebird birdhouses. Place the birdhouse, if you can, facing east, but towards an open space. So if you have the woods in the back and you have your lawn this way, so place it facing that way. If there is competition with tree swallows, then put up another birdhouse so they can share. And of course, house sparrows are the biggest problem for bluebirds. They are the ones that contributed to their population decline. So you do have to monitor and make sure they don't take over those uh, birdhouses. There is actually a device that you can make yourself or you can purchase it. It's called House Sparrow Spooker. Here are a few photographs. You just need to make sure you install it at the right time. So basically wait until the bluebirds discover your house. They take to it, they lay their first egg then you install the spooker and as soon as the birds fledge, you take it down. Some people have tried it as well around their bird feed as if they have too many house sparrows and they say it works as well. Well, good luck with attracting bluebirds. And more questions from our customer care. Amanda this time, she hears this a lot on the phone. Those who leave for the winter and only feed their birds in the summer wonder how dependent their birds become on bird feeders during the summer and how painful it is for them when the feeders are empty in the winter. Hi Amanda, it's ironic that you should ask me this question because it's exactly what I do with my backyard feeders. I enjoy watching birds visit my feeders in the spring and summer on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And then my wife and I migrate south to Baja, Mexico for six months to feed a whole different suite of birds in our backyard there. Meanwhile, we don't have someone come to either house to replenish our feeders when we're not there. Why? Because I know for certain that birds do not become dependent on our feeders. Birds are constantly faced with disappearing food resources on almost a daily basis. Birds have adapted over millions of years to respond to food sources that come and go. My take on our feeders is they're just like fast food outlets. They'll happily visit them and feed their faces, 
but as soon as natural foods present themselves, they will readily abandon our feeders. There have been at least two scientific studies that have addressed the question of dependency on feeders, both of them involving black-capped chickadees. Without going into details, the two studies concluded that the chickadees readily adapted and looked elsewhere for food when the feeders were suddenly not available to them. I do agree with others, though, that if one is feeding the birds in an area suddenly hit with extremely cold weather, especially ice storms, it's a good idea to keep your feeders filled during that time. You may very well save the lives of many birds. Well, someone has finally gone and done it, taken all the fun out of bird watching. Swarovski, the maker of my favorite binoculars, has brought high class observation equipment to a whole other level with the invention of its brand new Optic AX Vizio Smart Binoculars. Using, you guessed it, AI technology, these ultra modern binos can help you identify in real time over 9,000 bird species and other wildlife with just a touch of a button. Not only that, a pair of these binoculars will also allow you to share your discoveries and offer even more practical extra functions. To give credit where credit is due, the person responsible for this incredible product is world famous industrial designer from Australia, Mark Newson. It took five years of research and development. The built-in camera can capture photos and videos which can then be immediately managed and shared with your smartphone using the associated Swarovski Optic Outdoor app. Within the app, you have the option to share discoveries, meaning that it enables the user to guide another person to the observed object using arrow markers in the display, allowing everyone in your group with these binoculars to spot that rare bird themselves. I suppose that the incorporation of artificial intelligence was inevitable. When the Merlin app, freely available from the Cornell Laboratory of Ornithology, came out with both photo and sound ID, I thought it was quite cool. However, while I trust the sound ID, I've not been that impressed with the photo ID. It remains to be seen then how accurate these new smart Swarovski binos will be in identifying birds. One thing is certain, the price tag for a pair will set you back about five grand US. I don't know that many birders who can afford to shell out that kind of money. In the end though, any technology that creates more bird lovers in the world is a good thing. They need all the help they can get. So before we say goodbye to the letter F in our bird alphabet, I thought I would talk not just about one bird, but a group of birds that share the same name, and that's ferruginous. I've seen this word before, I've never really looked it up before until now, so this is something to educate me and hopefully to plant a little seed of knowledge in your head as well. So what is ferruginous? It comes from the Latin word ferrugo, which means iron, rust or rust colored. So guess what color are these birds? Well, they are this beautiful rust color, very intense. It helps them actually blend or camouflage with their surroundings, especially when hunting. So here in North America, we have the ferruginous hawk and the ferruginous pygmy owl. The ferruginous hawk is actually the largest hawk here in North America. It even has larger broods than your regular hawks. It loves open habitat grasslands. It's found mostly on the West Coast and it uses its rust colors when blending in and hunting in those tall grasses. The ferruginous pygmy owl is more in the Southwest of the United States in Mexico. So not a bird that you'll see in your backyard here. It also uses its uh, intense rust colors to blend in with the desert environments and the woodlands when hunting and nesting. And then there are four more birds that are ferruginous. There is the ferruginous duck, the ferruginous flycatcher, the ferruginous ant bird, and the ferruginous babbler. I hope you'll see one of them one day. Well, bird selfies turned out to be actually a lot more fun than human selfies. As one of the judges wrote to me, I could have easily pick 20. Now let's check out the top five.
Here's the third place. The second place. And the grand prize winner, March Photo Contest, is going to be funny as well. I think it's the art of napping. Well, that's it. That's all for now. Please share any insights you have on bluebirds. We love hearing from you. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.